Okay, let me show you what I've done to my Max 30, 9 watt Max 30 scooter, which I think uh, I've got it pretty much perfect now. A few modifications here and there. I'll show you what I've done to the scooter. I think it's like, it's spot on now. So look, here we go. Start up the top uh, with the handlebars here. I've done uh, a move of the bell to the opposite side of the brake lever it used to be set on this side of course it was easy to hack, get get to the bell but the lever was a bit of a set too far over that way and not easy to get your whole hand on the lever uh, it's really just a two finger thing on the on the stock setup um, so that that's better ergonomically for me I also changed the grips put some bicycle grips on they just clamp on piece of cake um, and they're much narrower than the stock grips which are too fat for my liking and actually they're longer than the original grip so I kind of feels like I've got longer handlebars they the actual original handlebar sits I know about here inside this tube of the grip anyway wider handlebars thinner grips really nice um, stick I stuck with the stock throttle I tried a twist grip throttle on it just like a motorcycle but it doesn't work well with the scooter uh, so went back to the original thumb throttle that's perfect um, added this uh, GPS uh, unit which gives me an idea of you know comparing what the display says and what the actual speed is and of course it's got a clock which is handy for me when I'm commuting um, I've just got like a strap on flashing light here which is great just bicycle light and I use that uh, all during daylight hours the stock headlight is really good but I add in the winter time I've got a bracket that comes off the two sections of the handlebar here and uh, to a, a bar and then I can add an extra flashlight to it um, it's kind of sketchy riding at night though because um, uh, people on cycle paths tend to wear black things and they blend in pretty well you come up against them pretty fast anyway that aside got a cool custom graphics reflective gra graphic kit on the sides and um, so going on to uh, performance mods and so on I've got the MyMax mods, uh, extra 12 volt battery here, which makes it up to 48 volt battery. Um, and you have to charge it separately with a separate charger that comes with the kit. And it just plugs in right there. Um, but uh, one of the questions I had and I wasn't sure about was, um, you know, because this battery cable here, there's the battery is the extra lead it comes down and it ties into the original battery cable I wasn't sure whether I should unplug that here each time I charge this battery but in actual fact you don't need to you just leave it plugged in as it is and when you charge the scooter you plug in the extra charger here and then the stock charger down in the flat down here so this extra 12 volts makes an enormous difference to the performance of the scooter uh, it makes it much more torquey so you can pull up hills a lot faster now than you could on the stock scooter setup and uh, of course you get a little bit of extra top speed I'd say probably uh, top speed is real top speed is now about 24 25 miles an hour on the flat um, but on the meter here, it'll show uh, 28 miles an hour. Uh, so there's a little bit of a speed differential between what it reads and what the actual GPS speed is. So it reads a little bit faster than what you're actually going. But it's a, a good performance increase over the stock scooter. A um, little bit of extra top speed and uh and in fact i wouldn't want it to go any faster than it goes right now it's absolutely perfect um and good performance so um 
One of the things about this, I'm going to tip the scooter on its side so you can see what I've done underneath. One of the things about this is the... After about 200 miles, having added this extra 12 volt battery, uh, I had a melted connector. Well, there's three power wires which go to the electric motor in the wheel. Um, and they were, they had three separate bullet connectors, electric bullet connectors. And there's just too much resistance on those connectors and they get hot and they, the installation will melt. Um, and it melted on mine and uh, it quit on me after about 200 miles and I got really lucky two of these wires actually shorted together um, at the connector area and uh, I got lucky in the fact that it didn't burn out the controller which is right here um, but my uh, my max mods should with their 12 volt kit provide one of these MT60 three pin connectors uh, to replace the original three bullet connectors um, of course I now I added this window now I was a little bit nervous about it about too much heat getting in there um, because they melted so now I can just quickly turn the scooter on its side and just have a look just to make sure everything's looking good and it's been fine ever since I've done like 800 miles now after the mod and um, it's it's been perfect and i even put like a little temperature sticker on the controller so i could see if the temperature of the controller was getting hot and it doesn't it stays cool and um one of my concerns was from get it getting hot was uh okay well i'll add some ventilation to the scooter so i've added this little inlet tube like a 90 degree angle uh it's like a plumber's fitting um, and there's one on the opposite side pointing backwards so like a ram air effect here and then a suction effect on the back side to draw air through uh, and I'm sure it actually runs cool enough that you don't need to bother doing this modification uh, so I actually have a little plug in here now just to uh, plug it off and stop debris getting in there but so uh, the bottom line is it does actually seem to stay cool enough having replaced that connector. That's the, that was th those three bullet connectors were the main problem. So while it's on its side, you can see I've done the uh, upgrade to the monorim suspension system. Uh, this is the rear setup and then here's the front setup. Let's turn it back up on its wheels. Um, I started off the first thing I did was I added the front suspension and uh, just ran it like that for quite a while and it worked really good with just this front suspension um, but then you know wanting to modify stuff I I switched uh, the rear suspension out as well put or put the monorim rear, rear suspension on uh, to match and uh, the stock suspension system comes with a really a, a shock absorber that goes here that is really just a spring in a tube that's all it is and it made a lot of rattling clanking noises because there was no control of the suspension up and down it was just literally a spring so uh, I found these air suspensions online on AliExpress um, and I think you can get them on eBay too uh, I added a Kayaba <laughs> shock sticker which doesn't belong on there it's actually this exa form uh, a5 shock and um it makes absolute world of difference it's just so quiet now in operation it works perfectly um it's a double chamber shock there's you can get single chamber or double chamber i went for the double chamber which provides a little bit of rebound dampening there's no oil dampening in it. It's uh, just a couple of different air chambers. Um, so the high pressure chamber on the front here, I've got at 40 PSI. And the low pressure chamber, I've got at 30 PSI. And it's a little lower than the pressures they recommend, but there's not so much leverage on the front compared to the rear. So the pressure 
at 40 psi and 30 was the best setup I could find and it works great so then I went to the rear shock arrangement and I also got the same shock absorber for the rear it's inverted so that uh, um, I didn't interfere with it with my foot on the board here uh, but this one runs on the high pressure side 100 psi and then on the low pressure side uh, 90 psi anyway that's perfect for my weight I'm about 190 pounds 190 pounds and that, that works fine uh, I added this little rubber mud flap just a piece of rubber and I just three rivets just to hold uh, just to kind of prevent you know mud and dust and stuff kind of coming over this area and it works great just provides the right sort of protection there um, and then I added this little zip tie here uh, to just to support this rear fender which if you jump off curbs and stuff it'll uh, have a tendency to work its way down even though the bolts are tight just the shock of the uh, scooter landing on the ground um, would cause it to work, nudge its way down so this strap just holds everything in place it keeps it keeps it normal um, on the other side uh, I added a longer side stand because um, with the, adding the suspension it lifts up the the whole ride height from the stock scooter uh, and on that note the um, uh, just by with the stock monitor in front and the add in the rear suspension the scooter was kind of tilted forwards it wasn't very level to the ground um, so I did a little bit of uh, engineering work on the front end and um, I added a steel plate here there's a weld along here probably difficult to see but there's a weld right there so I added 20 millimeters of uh, the same thickness plate um, onto the original side bracket here and you can see these were the original mounting holes on this side plate so I moved everything up which effectively lowers the the suspension more from what it was originally um, by 20 millimeters and it kind of it's still a little bit nose down at 20 millimeters but it's it's actually pretty nice now so uh, it's great um, and then of course I did a separate video on this uh, steering damper setup um, it works great with this monorim suspension I just added this steel bar here which holds the front of suspension uh, the front of the steering damper I got this off eBay for 35 bucks and uh, it's adjustable so I can change the strength of the dampening and then I just made this is uh, just a steel plate with a, a mounting lug that I welded onto it and it's just uh, held onto the frame with uh, uh, worm drive screws and clamps and some double-sided tape hose clamps and um, anyway that works fine and I could get full lock one way to the other and uh, that works really nicely to have that extra dampening you still really can't take your one hand off the handlebar with any confidence at all it's still a little bit shaky but I found that if I you know lean forwards on the scooter and rest my belly on this part of the handlebar while I've still got my hand on this side then I can let go this side and I've got some better stability uh, to like turn my earbuds on and off or whatever I want to do with wave at people <laughs> um, and then uh, oh you can see this this is the opposite side uh, fitting for venting the electronics area um, and the forward movement of the scooter would suck air out of the electronics area to provide some cooling so I've got that open because it doesn't actually ram any air in it's sucking air out of it so I think it'll provide some a little bit of extra cooling for the electronics the motor 
does get quite hot after the modification with the extra 12 volt battery um, but not hot enough that it's caused any problems my commute is like nine miles each way it's pretty warm by the time i get to work but uh you know with the price of gas it's just been brilliant this thing for getting backwards and forwards to work it's uh it's perfect anyway i think this is this is about all you need to do to get the nine bot max really tricked out and uh working with a lot of confidence riding confidence uh decent performance and uh comfort with suspension um so there we are got any questions or anything leave a note down below thanks a lot bye